Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to Let's Play the Political Machine 2016. Political Machine is a American presidential election simulation game. It is really fun to play. Uh, it does get re-released every time there's a new presidential election which a new, with a new cast of characters in there. This is currently an early access on Steam, so the multiplayer and leaderboards aren't in there yet, but we're going to go ahead and play a new game, and we're going to see if we can't get people to feel the burn. I'm going to tune the difficulty. I'm going to bring it down just a notch over here so we can go a little bit faster and a little easier and a little bit more fail-safe. Uh, the default campaign length when you start the game is short. You can go quite long, though. Um, in particular, so epic. This is like two years. It's pretty normal like, probably for an American campaign, to be honest. Uh, whereas short over here, it's a lot more normal for um, election campaigns everywhere else in the world. Even 21 weeks is long. We just had like a record long 17 week um, federal election campaign in Canada and people were talking about how like ridiculous it was that it was a whole 17 weeks. That's way too long. Um, the game is set up by default to be relatively representative of the polls of the United States, um, you know, tweaked for game balance, but if you really want to have a, a replayable experience, you can always randomize a bunch of information about where you're playing in, um, which will cause you to have to employ a completely different strategy every single time. So, we're going to start off. It is worth noting you can, if you like, create your own character, male or female, and if you, you got to put a name first for some reason. You can even customize the way you look. We've got a bunch of different types of bodies that you can apply, a bunch of different types of head shapes, hair shapes, which of course is very important, like that. Oh, just lovely, great stuff. And then, you know, hey, we'll change our eyes and our mouth and uh, wow, this is this is really double plus on good. But you can make your character look any way you want. You can even adjust the size of all these components. So very customizable. It'll be lovely to play online, I think, uh, and, and do that. Uh, it's also worth noting you've got stats. You've got 10 points to spend here, although you can also reduce your points in a category to free some up and customize your character's stats in different things. Charisma increases the effectiveness in speeches and ads. Appearance increases the effectiveness of interview appearances. Credibility um, increases the effectiveness of your negative ads and decreases the effectiveness of negative ads your opponent makes. Ooh. Uh, experience uh, makes it easier to win endorsements by decreasing their political capital cost and so on and so forth. Everything's got a little bit of something going on. Uh, minority appeal and religiousness. In addition to this, you've got your platform. This is your stand on the issues. Uh, you know, again, in your, your custom character, everything starts off neutral, and you got 100 points to uh, sort of push you in one direction or another. So I'm very against outsourcing of jobs. I am pro-reducing unemployment. And whether you're going against or in favor of, it does cost you some points here um, as you sort of, you know, set up, yeah, set up your platforms. What are the issues that are important to you and how is that going to affect how you run your election? We're going to go ahead, though, we're going to we're going to feel the burn here. We're going to play as Bernie Sanders, who is the, uh, the real, I mean, he is the love of sort of internet, uh, social, liberal, People very very much the the mainstream media doesn't seem to pick up on him too much but uh, if you you know if you go to reddit ever like 90% of all posts on the website will be about Bernie Sanders so we're gonna play as him uh, he has stat wise decent stamina he does not start with a lot of money and his fundraising ability is okay but let's compare Donald Trump who starts with a crap ton of money and is really good at fundraising he's also got great charisma for some reason though Donald doesn't get much in the way of credibility over here um, and also he's not really doesn't have a really well developed platform he's mostly just against everything except a very large military right there um, so whereas Bernie Sanders is pro again the way it's set up most of these things here most of the characteristics are sort of going to be like things the government does. So, right, so if you're sort of a social liberal type person, you will be pro most of these things. And if you're more of a um, um, libertarian, you'll be against most of these things. It's sort of the way they set it up. It's not quite accurate, but, you know, ballpark figures is going to be that sort of thing. So we're going to play as Bernie Sanders over here. And what the hell, let's play against the Donald. Everyone knows, of course, that Donald Trump is destined to be the president of the United States in the next election. It's clearly the case. So we're going to live in this crazy fictional world where we are going to try to make Donald Trump lose. You can create a custom opponent to play against as well. And you can always, uh, you can go into your list, I think, of... Oh, you can save your custom people, and then they will show up at the top of the list if you sort it by custom. So there you go. So we have a 21-week campaign to win. This is the, the main view. This is the gameplay mode over here. Turns are taken simultaneously, so Trump is going to be doing his thing right now. Except in the few very rare circumstances, uh, it's not going to be a big problem 
Um, there's not much of a timing issue. It's not going to be a race most of the time. Every now and again, though, it will be. So this is the main game view, and this is in the polling view. Uh, province or Provinces. <laughs> That's Canadian to me. States that are bluer are more likely to vote Democrat, and states that are redder are currently, not more likely in general, but currently leaning either Democrat for blue or leaning Republican for red. It's interesting to note, this is the opposite of the um, left-right spectrum for most countries. Canada included, but a lot of European countries as well. Blue tends to be conservative and red tends to be liberal. Just interesting that it's the inverse in uh, the United States. But there you go. You can't actually like tilt the view around. I don't think there's any reason to ever do that, but you can. Um, so every state has got some stats in here, and you can actually go to one of the states. It's nice, these little states over here, when uh, when you've got a candidate there, it actually just blows it up so you can see it a little bit better. You can double click on here and see the issues of concern in that state. Every state has a wealth, a certain number of voters, and a certain number of electoral votes. Vermont here, this is one of the things that's going to be hard with Bernie Sanders. Vermont's only worth three electoral votes. It's basically not an issue in the election. Um, I start with an edge there because that's my home state, but sorry, Vermont. You're actually not that important. Um, so if you don't know how the American election system works, when you're voting for president, it's not the person who gets the most actual votes that wins. Every state has a certain electoral vote, and it's the person that ends up with the most electoral vote that becomes president. Generally speaking, you need 270 or more to win the electoral vote. And basically, if you get at least, you know, 51% of the votes in a state, you get all of that state's electoral votes. So you can see Michigan is worth 16, right? Vermont was worth three, Michigan's worth 16, California is worth a whopping 55, which is huge. And it's more or less pegged to population. It's a little fuzzier than that, but that's basically the gist of it. You can go to a map mode that shows you the electoral votes by states right over here. The more purple it is, the more votes they get, so you can use that to prioritize. Uh, Texas is almost certainly going to go Republican. California is almost certainly going to go Democrat, as is New York. Um, but a lot of other things are up for grabs. And some of these, the, the purplish ones here, are tend to be the swing states. Those are the ones that can really go either way. Uh, Florida is a pretty mass, massive one with 29 votes, for example. Um, it's kind of difficult to win as a Democrat because each of these states, these are the guaranteed. 40% of the people will vote Republican no matter what in Florida, 36% will vote um, Democratic no matter what in Florida, and then 24% independents are up for grabs over here, for example. So there's a tendency to go one way or another based on that. Um, Illinois, most likely gonna go Democratic. Uh, Wisconsin is a little bit more balanced, actually. There's a lot more neutrals. Um, Michigan, a little bit more democratic, but it can go the other way. There's a lot of play available there. Uh, other things that are important, state wealth. You can do fundraising for money, which is going to be very important for me because I'm going to have a lot less money than Donald Trump. I start with less than half. I start with $2 million. He's going to start with something like $4.5 million or something like that. And he can actually fundraise a little bit better as well. So that's going to make things quite difficult, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. Um, the other thing is awareness, which is very important. This is how many, the percentage of people in a state that feel like they really know you. So in Vermont, I start with 20% awareness because it's my home state, but in most of these places, it's 5%. Although the Donald is also starting basically with 5% everywhere as well. Um, except New York, which is his home state, which is kind of annoying to me because I would like more awareness there. Um, there's also this planning mode where you can plan, you know, it's like, okay, if I take all these blue states and let's say... Indiana. There we go. That will give me 280 electoral votes, which is enough to win. I would need, again, I need 270. So I could focus entirely on every state up here, plus the entire West Coast, plus New Mexico. There we go. Then uh, that would be sufficient to win the election. In fact, if I lost New Mexico, that would also be fine. And Hawaii? Technically, that would also be fine. So you can choose where to focus your efforts. Uh, Florida, again, is, is a swing state is up for grabs and is worth a good amount of votes. So instead, I could say, cancel this and this, grab Florida and say, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna abandon, um, I'm gonna abandon these guys. Okay, I'm still winning. And then do that. And this is a planning mode. This is just like sort of doing electoral math. Like how can it end up doing it? One thing I thought earlier versions of the games had, and I can't find here, and I may have just imagined it. It's something it should have, is it'd be nice if there was a button that would automatically set this board based on what the current polls are, right? So you can look at like, okay, set it to what the current polls are, and then let's see where we've got some wiggle room. So anyway, you can set up sort of a battle plan there. So let's assume we're going to do, we're, let's, let's leave out Florida. And so we need this and New Mexico. Oh, and the West Coast. 
280 electoral votes. So we're going to fight hard for these. If we get all those, that's enough. It's sort of screwed up. We can sort of ignore the rest of the country. That's literally the American electoral system. There's bits of the country you can just not pay attention to and not care about their issues, which is weird. Anyway, um, for now, what are we going to do to start off with? Well, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to, to California first. California is the richest state in the union over here. And while it is guaranteed to go, or practically guaranteed to go Democrat, I'm going to need to rely on them for a little bit of fundraising. So I'm going to fly over there. So that's a $25,000 flight. Boom. It's expensive when you're Bernie Sanders over here. We don't have that much money. Then I'm going to build an HQ. There's three types of HQ. Campaign headquarters, consulting office, and outreach center. Um, it talks about, first, if you look down here, it'll tell you what it does at every level. Only the campaign headquarters tells you it unlocks more issues. I believe that is incorrect. I think they all unlock more issues as you level them up. And what does that mean? Well, if I click on California, I can see the top five issues here. There's actually a lot more issues in that in the game. There's, I don't know, 20, 25, 30, some ridiculous amount. If I go to Vermont over here, I can actually see 10 different issues. And the reason for that is I have a level one HQ here in Vermont. If I get a level two, then I see 15 issues. And a level three, you see all of the issues. But you always see the top five. The thing is, sometimes you can't really fight for the top five. Um, what does this mean, first of all? So you can see the top issue in Vermont is the issue of repealing Obamacare. Democrats are very opposed to it. Republicans are very uh, in favor of repealing Obamacare. And independents are slightly in favor of repealing Obamacare. Um, and then you've got our current position. I am very against repealing it. Uh, you can see a missing image here. This is, again, early access. And um, Trump is very in favor of it. So by being very in favor of it, it helps to energize his base. You know, Republicans are like, yeah, 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 we're going to vote for you, obviously. Um, and Democrats are like, no, 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 we're not going to vote for you, obviously. And then um, and then there are these independents, and they will shift a little bit based on that. So what you want to do is you want to ideally align yourself to a popular position to get elected. But not only that, you can bring up another issue. Like, yeah, I'm not, obviously, I'm not going to sway these new tr these undecideds here based on me all of a sudden switching my stance on Obamacare. That would be stupid and terrible. So instead, what I would like to do is maybe maybe say, listen, I'm going to reduce unemployment. I'm going to I'm already sort of more pro than this than um, than Trump. And I could, you know, make do some advertisements, say some speeches and things like that and really develop my platform to be even more about reducing unemployment. And by running ads here and saying speeches about reducing unemployment, I can actually increase the importance of this issue in Vermont. I could actually make it the most important issue in Vermont while also aligning my platform to it. And that will sell more people on the idea that electing me is a good idea, for example. So the way it works to your support, you can actually hit this Y and it's very useful. You get an issue score, your opponent gets an issue score, and then you both have an awareness and that's multiplied together to give you a final score, which helps to determine basically which way the neutral swing, which is really interesting. Um, yeah, so issues. Anyway, uh, we're going to build some HQs here in California. I'm going to build a campaign headquarters. So the difference is campaign headquarters give you more money every week and give you more awareness every week. A consulting office, basically its only purpose is to give you more political capital every week. Political capital is used to hire um, these sort of political operatives that can be used for a variety of tools. And then the outreach center, its primary goal is to give you PR clout every week. Clout can be used to get... Um, to get certain, what do, you, what do you call them? Special interest groups. To get special interest groups to endorse you. For example, um, the National Union Action Network or the National Civil Liberties Union. The blue ones are the ones that tend to be Democratic. The red ones are the ones that tend to be Republican. They say the Republican ones are more expensive. Not only that, by being endorsed by any one of these people, you do get a lot of awareness across the other country, entire country. So it's really good. But not only that, but it affects your platform. So if I were to be endorsed by the National Gun Owners Association, I would actually become more anti-big government and more pro-gun rights as part of my platform, which I may or may not want. Um, in practice, as a Democrat, I'm probably going to try to snag all the blue ones, and the Republican will probably try to grab all the red ones. Because Trump has a lot of money, he actually might be able to snag to steal some of these away from me, which is unfortunate because I'm going to focus, I'm going to have to focus very early on on just building my campaign headquarters base for some money and awareness. And I may not be able to get my outreach centers up fast enough. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, for now, campaign headquarters, we need money and I'm going to level it up right away.
to level two. More money per week. I mean, you do spend a lot of money up front doing it, don't get me wrong. Um, it is going to be worth it in this case, because... By upgrading here, I spend 500,000, but over the course of 20 weeks, this is gonna, or 21 weeks, it's gonna give me 6, 630,000. So I'm gonna end up ahead in money by doing this. But more importantly as well, I'll get all the extra awareness, um, just sort of passively building every week in California. Again, California, I'm almost guaranteed to win anyway, but the extra awareness is gonna be important later on when I want to fundraise here. I'm gonna leave the level two HQ here. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly to New York and basically do the same thing. So I'm almost out of stamina, so I'm not going to be able to do anything else on this turn. Flying costs one stamina. Most, well, everything else costs more than that. Uh, though technically a special interest here, this doesn't take any stamina over here. So I'll just have to end my turn here in New York. And then I'm going to build a new HQ, a new campaign HQ here. And I'm going to level up to the next level. It, it'll basically pay for itself while also passively increasing awareness in the two states I want to do the primary amount of fundraising in. Um, now, with three stamina, what can I do? Actually, what I should have done is fundraised in California while I was there. Because I could fly somewhere and then do nothing. I'm going to go ahead and fundraise. It will take three stamina. It won't give me much money. Actually, that's not bad at all. Uh, with every fundraiser that you run, you get less money in that state. So you can sort of tap them out. Um... But New York is one of the richest states there is, and my fundraising uh, ability isn't bad. So there we go. We got a little bit of extra cash. And right now I'm leading New York, but this will change pretty dramatically. Again, I'm mostly going to focus in the northeast here, the west, and New Mexico. And if I get all that, oh, and Hawaii, then that will be enough to win. But it might be challenging. We'll see. Um, and I'm out of stamina, so next turn. Ooh, there's an event over here. I don't know if it's good or bad is what's annoying here. Oh, Trump's going to grab it. I could have gotten it first. Question, yellow question marks. You don't know if they're they're good or they're bad. Uh, what I think we're going to do here... I'm going to fly to New Hampshire. I'm going to build an HQ. I'm going to build an outreach center. It does... It, it'll st Actually, no. I'm going to... I'm going to build a consulting office. Consulting office doesn't give you any awareness, but it will slowly accumulate some political capital. And I want to get started on that. In fact, I'm going to level up to two. I'm investing a lot of money in here, but it's going to start getting some political capital accruing relatively early so that we can start to get some political operatives. Um, I should win New Hampshire. Not guaranteed, though. Actually, New Hampshire has a lot of independence. I forgot about that. It's only four votes. I think I actually am going to end my turn here. Next turn, I might start with a speech in New Hampshire. I'm not getting any free um, um, awareness from that uh, consulting office, is worth noting. All right, we'll give a speech here. We'll give her first speech. So I do have an awareness of a lot of the issues that New Hampshire cares about. Uh, they really care about deficit reduction, which Trump is more uh, closely aligned with. They care about a strong military, which I actually oppose, and, strong, and Trump is very pro, and tax cuts and repealing Obamacare. Not a fan of any of these things. They are, however, pro-gay marriage and pro the Iranian nuclear deal. What I think I should do is give a speech in favor of gay marriage. One, any speech will give you more awareness, which is good. And two, the speech will, A, improve my, my alignment of the platform, at least in New Hampshire, but also increase the awareness of gay marriage here and will bring it up the list. And if we can bring it up into, like, top three, that'll actually have a pretty big impact on things. So we're going to say we are in favor of this. I could also run a, neutral, a negative ad campaign or something, but that can really easily backfire. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's, let's go ahead and get a little bit more New Hampshire while I'm here. Then hopefully I'll never have to travel here again. No offense, New Hampshire. There we go. So now gay marriage is the second most important issue, and I'm most strongly aligned with it. And the neutrals are actually, it's a pretty important issue for neutrals. Not as important as some of these others, like reducing unemployment, which actually maybe I should have given a speech on. Um, but, I mean, Trump also wants to reduce unemployment, right? But I might be able to align myself as the I hate unemployment guy. Oh, I have a TV interview waiting for me. It's going to take care of that right away. The O'Malley scenario. All right. Uh, what's this? It's not Bill, is it? It is Bill O'Malley. Tonight, what can patriots do to fight for freedom at home? And what wisdom can I impart upon a presidential hopeful in a mere 10 minutes? Stay tuned to the scenario to find out. Some filthy left-wing states now have legal marijuana. 
there are now visible stink lines coming off of those places. What are you going to do about it? So what I have to do here is I have to answer the question correctly based on virtual Bernie Sanders um, campaign. I can't, I can't lie, basically. I can't mislead. I have to pick the answer that fits my candidate. Uh, let's test drugs on those hippies. No. I put an end to it. I don't think so. I think mostly harmless is probably his stance here. It's stinky, but it's probably harmless. But let, let them have their marijuana. All right. People were okay with it. May have not been the best answer. Are you serious? You really think it's harmless? Um, oh, a follow-up question. I'm actually not used to seeing this. Um, didn't cause me any problems. Whoa! I'm going to say yes, I do. It's certainly no more harmful than alcohol, marijuana. Something better treated as a public health issue rather than criminal matter. Mm, getting a little bit of support. Traditionalists in this country are under siege by secularists. We've got the ACLU and other left-wing radicals running around and suing local communities that defy them. Oh, Bill. As president, what would you do about this kind of thing? Obviously, I'm going to be very pro-ACLU. Uh, I tend to side with secularists. All right. Oh, come on now. Christmas isn't just a religious holiday. It's a federal holiday, and the kids love it. How can you object to public buildings having some decorations up? Um, if I'm president, Christmas won't be a holiday. I'm going to go with this one. It's a federal holiday, nothing more. It's treated like anything else. We don't decorate buildings during Dr. King's birthday, do we? Wow. Those were actually uh, tough questions. A lot of times you can pick the exact right answer and get like a lot of cheers, even if it's not, you know, the conservative answer. Polls rise after appearance on O'Malley scenario. It was okay, um, but it could have been better. I do have enough political capital here to get an operative. In fact, I probably should have gotten a fashion consultant. No, I should have gotten a PR consultant before going in there. Mm, that's unfortunate. Um, what I think we're going to do now, wherever I get the consultant or right now, where, if I get a consultant, it'll appear in the state that I'm in and that's Pennsylvania, which is worth 20 votes and is definitely one of the ones I want to win. Uh, I think the thing to do early on is to get a consultant, which gives me a boost of awareness of 4% per week in the state that she's in. I think that's the one that makes the most sense early on. Later on, Spin Doctor is quite good um, because I'll get a ratings boost, issue ratings boost of 15%, which is really good, or the Smear Merchant, which is the opposite and decreases my opponent's stuff. I like Advertising Guru. That makes your advertising a lot cheaper, which is really nice if you're running any TV ads. Yeah, consultant for just a bunch of um, awareness will be good early on. Although I do like the speechwriter. Dragging him around when you're going to do some speeches is really strong. Okay, get me some more awareness in Pennsylvania, please, and thank you. And that will be the end of my turn since I have no more stamina. All right, so Pennsylvania is slightly in my favor, just barely. We'll almost certainly have to do a lot of work here in the future. Um, how is my awareness? New York, 20%. California, 15%. I definitely will need... You know what, actually? You there. Go to California. Raise my awareness over there. Actually, I should almost make some speeches in California to get some awareness. I want to get my awareness higher here so that I can go there and do some fundraising soon. But for now, we'll just have to basically... Um, wow, no, we really need more money. I guess we can try going to New York and do some fundraising. Uh, maybe I'll do a speech first to raise my awareness. Uh, I want um, I want to reduce unemployment. So my awareness right now is 22%. This should bring it to 32%, and it does. So now I'll do some fundraising here. Get almost a quarter million dollars. That's not bad. And then I will fly to Ohio, and I'll be able to set up an office over here next turn. I don't have any stamina right now, so I won't do it. Oh, but I do have a little bit of political capital. Did I get some from doing a speech? I'm not sure. Um, we, getting more, multiple copies of the same one gets more expensive. Uh, you know what? Let's get an advertising guru with the idea that we'll get an ad here next turn. Because we have enough money for that. Although, then we're probably not... No, we have enough money for this and um, an office, a level one office. There we go. Weekly news roundup. So every five turns, I think, you get one of these. It tells you what's going on. Trump builds HQ to secure loyalties in Illinois. Presidential... Missing a capital P. Sanders takes an early lead. Right. I mean, I have an early lead in the popular vote, but what's the actual polls? Well, if the election were held today, I would get a landslide victory in Electoral College, but it's too early for anything like that. 
What do you have over here? Increases your stamina. Oh, this heckler increases my stamina cost in Illinois. That is unpleasant. We're going to have to go and take him out of the picture. No TV interviews anywhere? Nope. Okay. You can see Trump has set up tons of these um, consulting offices all over. He's going to have a lot of points to spend. Whereas me, well, actually, it is probably time. Well, I've got a consulting office. It's probably time to start getting some outreach centers, which do give me a little bit of awareness. So that will be nice here. I only have enough money for the level one. And yeah, I will create an ad here. Uh, Wall Street regulation. Yeah, let's advertise the idea of Wall Street regulation in Ohio. That will raise this up in importance. So if we look at it, Wall Street regulation is here. Um, independents are pretty in favor of it. I mean, you know, 14 isn't bad. I mean, it's not as critical as some others, but it's not bad. Trump is obviously very against it. So if I raise this up, this should encourage more neutrals to go my way. I like that idea. Plus, you know, it sounds like a Bernie Sanders kind of thing to do. So yes, we will put in an advertisement, just ground media, not TV. We don't have enough money for that. Um, so this will change my position of it in this state uh, by one per week and increase the, um, the importance of it in the state. So the importance of it and, hey, you know what? I wonder if this is even oh, zero weekly expense. Ah, let's do it. It's fine. Um, and then we're sort of out of juice. No, so what I'll do, do I not have myself selected? Yeah, because I only have four stamina left. I can't do a speech. I'm going to fly to California. That'll use up one. It's very expensive to fly out here. But then I can do fundraising in California. It should be worth a fair amount of money, even with only 23% awareness. Huge amounts of cash. I might, next turn, maybe I should just farm Florida some more, or California some more. I think I keep saying that wrong. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Boom. And again. All right, California. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go and maybe lock down Oregon a little bit. It's not going to need a whole lot of work. But actually, this would be a great place to build another outreach center. Mostly, we just need a little bit of awareness in Oregon. So we're going to do that. And we actually have enough for um, another operative. I'm going to get a fixer, which allows me to bop off someone. So I'm going to use the fixer to get rid of that heckler over here in Illinois. So it'll be a little bit easier for me to convert that over later on. Boom. Go away. Thank you. And that's it for my turn, because I'm out of juice. I do have a good amount of money sitting there. So Trump is going to try to do an interview over there. Oh, and he's got his first endorsement. And I'm quite far from getting my first endorsement. We're going to go ahead and level up this outreach center, though. And I can't level up any further than that. Okay, awareness is going to grow every week, and I've got support. I think Oregon is good now. So let's move to Washington State and build another outreach center over here. So a little bit of awareness is just gonna grow passively there as well, which I think is all we need because we've got, Washington's leaning in our direction. I think we're gonna be okay. Um, we don't really have any stamina for anything else. We don't have enough points to spend. I could go and see what this is. Let's, let's try, let's risk it. Bad things could happen though. Movie director has decided to slum for a while in the world of political advertising and join Bernie Sanders' team, cutting advertisement costs in half wherever he's stationed. Halves cost of ad creation and target state for you. So I can move you? Oh, you're there, and I can put you anywhere. Where, ooh, where might I want to run a TV ad? That sort of thing could allow us to run some crazy ads in uh, Florida. I have a TV interview waiting for me over here, which I should probably, yeah, I can do with my last piece of stamina. Okay, let's do that. Hopefully this one's a little bit better here in Alaska. O'Malley scenario. All right, Bill. What you got for me? Uh, we are getting socked to the pump. The big oil companies are taking us to the cleaners. This president, what would you do about this? Um, I think he's relatively green. So investing in alternate alternative energy is good, but we could also go after the oil companies. Obviously, let the market deal with it isn't what he said. I, let's say alternative energy. 
we go. That worked out pretty well. Deficit is getting ridiculous. Our grandkids are going to end up having to pay for all the spending. What are you going to do if you're president? Um, I think realistically, we need to pay our own way. We have to raise taxes. I mean, that's, I think that's the answer for him. Ooh, people did not like that. I mean, I may have answered accurately, but you know, people hate it. Strong showing on the O'Malley where scenario wins independence. And I'm out of stamina. I have, okay, I have paper ads here. I don't have any TV ads yet because I had nowhere near enough money for that. And who do I have here? The advertisement guru is already saving me money. Hmm. Guess I don't know what? I can keep them around for now. And just deploy them later on. Okay, let's go to the next turn. I don't know what all those boos were for. I do have enough money for another operative. I don't have to kill any of uh, Trump's. I could do some more fundraising in California, but I think we'll wait until, again, our awareness keeps passively going up. Let's go to New Mexico, where Trump's actually working some TV ads over here. Uh, is he doing in favor of securing the borders? Yeah, so he's increasing the importance of securing our borders. Let's build us another outreach center so we get some passive awareness gain. And it'll unlock some more stuff. And let's raise the attention of reducing unemployment over here. Mostly we're doing this to get some extra awareness here. But it also positions us in a good way. And we have just enough stamina. I think... Okay, I should probably get a new operative over here. And just leave him there. Just some spin doctor here. I mean, New Mexico only gets five boats. I don't think that's quite worth it. Let's... Um, oops, that's not, well, that's okay. We'll use our last stamina. Do I have to pay to move him? That would suck. No. Okay, moving him is free. And it doesn't use a stamina. Maybe it's because this is the turn I deploy him. Um, Trump is going to make a play for Illinois, which is worth 20 votes. Um, Illinois does lean heavily, heavily, heavily Democratic. But it's not a lock. So we're going to go over there, too. And we're going to try to sway some of the uh, independents before Trump gets his uh, grubby, grubby hands on it. Okay, running mates this week. So, we get to choose who we're going to have as our vice president. Now, this is pretty important because there's, I mean, there's issues that can be compatible. And Trump's doing some stuff in the background. But also, one of the valuable things is how much money these people bring to the table. Because you do get that added, you know, more fundraising. I don't know if that affects anything. So, Lincoln Chafee has a seven. I like Elizabeth Warren. She's worth, she's got the six in the money. And I think she's pretty compatible issue-wise with uh, Bernie Sanders over here. So, there we go. Running mate is used to give awareness bonuses to the state they're in and all nearby states. So that sounds like a pretty good idea. In fact, what I'm going to do is plop her right down here in Indiana. So she'll increase her awareness there and yeah, in the nearby states as well, which seems like a pretty good idea. I have an interview waiting for me over here. Um, I should be able to get a PR consultant and that's my spin doctor. Where's my PR consultant? Is it just global? Oh, that might make sense, actually. Yes, okay. It's just global, the PR consultant. That makes a lot of sense because, yeah, interviews aren't really locational. Um, so I should do better in the interview there. But before that, I want to go, I'm going to put my movie director here in Illinois. And I got money from Elizabeth Warren over here. So we're gonna actually create a TV ad to say, we are in favor of reducing unemployment. So everyone likes this, first of all, and a TV ad will actually affect the my position and the importance of this issue nationwide. Uh, wow, that really makes the ads so much cheaper. That is amazing, amazing. Um, we should also be able to get another endorsement, or actually our first endorsement. Let's get the National Civil Liberties Union, which will make me more against NSA surveillance and more pro-gay marriage, plus give me more awareness nationwide. And I'm going to build another outreach center over here, and I can't level that up. I could do some fundraising. That will cost all three. That means I'll miss the interview. So no, I want to go and get... Nope. You, stay there. That's costing me 
stamina to move her. I will move here and do the interview. Now that I have my PR consultant. Border with Mexico is absolute chaos. Millions of illegals are already in the United States and more poor in all the time. What would you as president do about it? It's not that big of a problem. I think you're overstating the problem. Illegal immigrants have almost no access to public services. They provide far more to America than they take. And the legal ones are amongst the hardest working Americans there are. We need to stop demonizing them. This is one of those things, as a Canadian, you have to realize the only real, like, illegal immigrants we worry about are, I guess, Americans. I mean, we only have one land border, right? Obviously, people can come in by plane. But it's this, like, uh, weird... Most countries in the world worry about illegal immigration. I mean, in Canada, we do worry about, you know, immigration and quotas and taking in refugees and all those things, obviously. But just this sort of illegal immigrant uh, uh, walking across the border is not an issue for Canadians. So it's weird to think about. I'm going to go with this one for a burn here. Okay, good, good, good. That worked. Government wastes billions of dollars. That's why I hate seeing the government being put in charge of anything that isn't necessary. It's just so wasteful and corrupt. What's your take on it? Well, I am pro-big government, actually. So... The government helps Americans. The government isn't perfect, that is true, but it gets a lot of things done that it things doesn't get credit for, and it serves Americans. Unlike private companies who only serve their shareholders, let's make our government better, not get rid of it entirely. That's the Bernie answer. And there you go. If you watch the entirety of tonight's episode, you're a true patriot. I'm Bill O'Malley, and I'm proud of you. Okay, that interview went really well for us, I think. Brave answers. Impress. Should give us a lot more awareness. Uh, we are very nicely locked in in uh, New York. We could probably do some fundraising there as well. Um, I am completely out of stamina, though, so we're going to hold off on that. Can I get another endorsement? No. Every time you get an endorsement, the next one gets somewhat more expensive. So we'll have to wait here. Let me see if I can get an endorsement locked in before Trump grabs something again. There we go, environmentalist. Because if he grabs one, it actually does make it more expensive for me as well, I think. Might be wrong about that. Do we want to level up the HQ here? Yes. Yes, I do. Ohio is leaning towards me, which is good. I care about deficit reduction, which Trump has a better stance on. Student loan reform, though, I think we can push that up above a repeal of Obamacare, and that would work out very well for us. I think I'm going to hold on to the cash right now, at least for Ohio. Yeah, let me give a speech for student loan reform. Awareness up to 43%. Good speech. We have a little bit of movement left. We actually have enough points for another operative. Let's drop a spear, a smear merchant here in, um, in Ohio. Reduce the ratings of Trump's positions here. Ohio's 18 votes. It's pretty important. And then let's um, let's pop over to New York, and that'll be the end of our turn. Actually, I have a little bit of stamina. Let's move. Um, let's move our running mate here. Um, what's her name again? Elizabeth Warren. Yes, who I love. Uh, to New York as well to give us a little bit of an awareness boost. And the next turn, we can do some fundraising in New York. We've already had two here. Yeah, we're really not getting that much. If we want to do fundraising, we should probably do California. New York is a lock for us, which is good. Uh, we should probably hit a few of these other little bad boys. I think Indiana is part of our plan, too. We should really go to Indiana right now. Um, we don't have enough for an endorsement, right? Oh, we do, just barely. Um, how about the National Union Action Network? Sounds good. There we go. Already a little bit of a color shift as a result of that. I'm actually wondering, should we go and try to ninja Florida? I mean, he's trying to counter what I'm doing, which is why he's ignoring Florida as well. He's like, well, if I don't have to be there, I don't have to be there, right? Okay, these are leaning our way right now. If there was an election today, we'd win. Not by much, though. Let, let's fight for Indiana for now. I mean, we're here. Uh, we got some money. Let's go and build... Um, let's build a campaign headquarters. And then we'll create an ad here. We don't have much space for anything else. It'll be a. Uh, we could run a TV ad, but it's very expensive here. So let's do it. A reduce unemployment TV ad. Tea Party movement has endorsed Bush. 
Um... Right, it's better speeches. Illinois, we need more awareness there. We do have some things running, and we do have the ad. I wonder if we did something like drop the charisma guy in Florida and then run some speeches. Right now, there's only 9% independence up for grabs, which would bring us up to 48%. I mean, maybe we could dissuade some, uh, some Republicans, but it seems kind of unlikely. Anyway, let's drop the speech guy here, and then we can move him. Uh, no. Wait. Speechwriter. Oh, is he another global one? Oh, shit. I should really, like, hire that guy from the start. I bet you the fashion consultant is the same way. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, next time I'm going to prioritize those. I didn't realize that. I thought that you placed them somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to prioritize that next time. So now my speeches should be better. So let's go and give, um, student loan reform. Or, yeah in here in Indiana. Give a speech, get more awareness. So I've got a slight lead here. Let me give another one. Same thing. Um, actually, reduce unemployment. Try to bring those both above strong military. Okay, I've got a seven point lead over here. There's still a lot of independence up for grabs, enough to flip that, but I'm feeling pretty confident about it. Let's go up to, um, to Michigan. We'll work on them next turn. We are out of stamina. How many weeks we got left? Okay, we've got a good amount of time left. Actually, I should put a cut in here. We're just a little past halfway, and we've got 40-minute video. So, yes, thank you very much for watching, folks. If you want to see how this election turns out, make sure to tune in to the next episode. See you next time.